Gravies, in my opinion, are really your kind of secret weapon. Hi everyone, I'm Alfie. I'm one of the chef tutors at the Waitrose and Partners Cookery School. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make gravy. Here I've got a two rib of dry aged wing rib and we've cooked this in the oven and you can see at the bottom we've got loads of lovely meat juices ready to go. What we need to do first is take this beef out of the tray and put it onto a plate and leave it to rest. Normally resting time you're looking at about the same amount of time that you've cooked it for if it's a big joint of meat like this. So with the meat juices we've got left in our pan what we can do take our tray and I'm using induction today, but if you guys are using electric, it's the same thing, or if you're using gas as well, there's no issue. And we're just gonna turn this on to a medium heat. My tray isn't too warm, so I can use my hand on the corner here, but if yours is a bit warm, then do use a tea towel. So for this, we're gonna use beef stock. Makes perfect sense as we've just cooked beef and we've got beef juices here. Now this is coming up to heat, it's starting to boil. I'm just gonna turn this down slightly and then I'm gonna add in my tablespoon of flour. And then using a wooden spoon, I can just start to mix this through. And you really need to make sure that you're scraping all those lovely bits from the bottom of your pan. Don't leave it for too long, otherwise it may burn. That's all come together, it's looking lovely and thick. I've made sure nothing's caught on the bottom and I've scraped off all of those lovely flavors. If you find this is too thick, you could add a bit of stock to it now. And if it's too thin, simply just add a little bit more flour to it. Simple as that. I'm gonna turn it down just a bit. So everything's cleaned off the bottom. I can see it's nice and thick. And then we can go in with a good generous glug of red wine. So we're using a nice Merlot here. And then just scraping this together. My wine has been bubbling away for a minute or so. You don't need it in there for too long, um, but it's thickened up nicely. And now I can start with adding in my 500 mils of beef stock. So we've already warmed our beef stock and we can just start to add this in. And if you want the full recipe for this video, check the description below. I've put in a third and I've still got the heat on here. And when it starts to kind of vigorously boil, you know to add your next third. And I'm just gonna turn the heat up a little bit just to make sure it's coming down because we want this to be thicker. And if it is looking a little bit thin at this moment in time, you can add a little bit more flour to it. So I'm just gonna go over and grab my rib of beef. We can see on the bottom of our plate, we've got a little bit of uh, resting juices. I'm just gonna add that into my reducing gravy. You wanna make sure you're getting the most flavors you can out of your joint of meat that you're cooking. And then mix that through. And I'm really happy with the consistency of this. If we draw our spoon through, you can see it holds for a second or two, which is telling me it's a good consistency. And it's also really glossy as well. Now we can add our red currant sauce. Or if you don't have red currant sauce, you could use red currant jelly. And if you haven't got that, you could easily just use some cranberry sauce or jelly. So you're getting sweetness and you're getting the acidity from it. So it's a really good seasoning. And then just mix this in. And now all we need to do is give this a season. I'm gonna add a bit of black pepper and a little bit of salt as well. So just a couple of grinds of pepper. If you like pepper a lot, then add a little bit more. And I'm just going to add in a pinch of good quality sea salt and mix that through. So with this, just season to taste. I'm just gonna pour this into our warm gravy boat. And that's ready to serve with your favorite roast or whatever you may be eating.